Alright, so I know you motherfuckers have been waiting for a really, really, really motherfucking long time. A nigga's been waiting a goddamn century for me to go off on this shit. I don't know, I've just been getting a lot of requests and like just DMs and stuff talking about uh, just asking me to make this kind of video. And I honestly was gonna like not try to make it, like kind of just shy away and like kind of just stay quiet about it. But then I started thinking, I was like... Staying quiet and, like, not saying anything, like, speaking up about shit was kind of, like, how I got myself into the, I guess, position that I'm in now. I don't want to say, I don't want to sound like a victim or, like, sound like I, I was, like, victimized or whatever, but, like, I don't know. I feel like that's what got me. Like, that's what held me back from, like, actually getting things solved and, like, actually having, like, a positive environment and shit like that. So, today... We're gonna just expose every motherfucking body and they mama and just tell you guys my experience working at Urban Outfitters in Santa Monica. Ew. So, hello. My name is Cole, aka Cole Rocky Core, aka Mr. Pullout Game A1, aka Floody Motherfucking Mary. And today we are going to be doing a exposing video i don't even know what the fuck i'm gonna call this i don't know what this like qualifies as being but i'm basically just gonna be talking to you guys about my experience working at urban outfitters in santa monica i just want to start off um before i like go into like my rants and like everything else i'm gonna start saying about um this company um this is just like what i have personally seen from like my workplace and my store i've only worked at this one store for this company and this is probably gonna be my fucking last time working for this company um hopefully so i just want to say like whatever i have is like i'm not necessarily trying to shit on people or like expose i know i'm using that word but it's not like to be like overreaching because my nigga i got receipts for everything that i'm saying so if if y'all just really like about that type shit like try and make me prove it i can prove it but um yeah i'm not saying that this is every urban outfitters or like oh don't work at urban outfitters or whatever if you have like a store near you or whatever that you want to look into then i would implore you to look for yourself and see what you find about the store that you're looking for if you're looking to work at urban outfitters in santa monica then I guess I'm that nigga that's gonna tell you what the fuck is up. But, um, hopefully, by, I don't know, maybe things, hopefully things have changed, or maybe people have, like, started to act differently since I've been there. I don't know. So, I can't say that when you go there that it's gonna be the exact same shit that happened to me. Shit, probably could. I don't fucking know. I'm not here to be like, this is what you should or shouldn't do. It's just from my perspective of my motherfucking experience. So, with that being said, let's roast these niggas. So, I guess I'm going to just start from the beginning of when this all happened. And if you guys see me, like, kind of looking down or whatever, I tried to film this video before, and it didn't turn out so good because, like, I had shitty lighting and everything. So, I'm, like, kind of re-exploring, like, my previous video or, like, just my notes that I wrote for what I wanted to talk about. So, yeah, if I look like I'm drifting off between other things, and, yeah, I'm just rereading or rewatching what I've already got just to make sure that I'm, like, accurate in what I wanted to say the first time. So, yeah, that was a fucking shit ton to say. I guess I'll start at the beginning. Okay. So, one fucking miraculous day, I'm walking down the Santa Monica Promenade, just looking at store supply to, and I'm like, oh, Urban Outfitters, I guess, would be hiring, because it's, it's like, it was around, no, this was like around October, like late October, I think, when I first went in to talk to them. And, because I figured, like, hey, Thanksgiving is in maybe, like, four weeks, like, a few, like, it's coming up. Like, you're not that far away from Black Friday, fam. So, I'm like, okay, I might as well, like, go get a job, find out where I can work, who, like, who needs people during Black Friday, like, you know, obviously clothing stores. So, I walk into Urban Outfitters, I walk into another, a bunch of other stores, too, but Urban Outfitters are the ones that, obviously, fucking, I wound up working at, but, um, I go inside, I talk to, I see this guy just, like, working on a mannequin, I'm like, oh, okay, like, I don't have to look and see, like, oh, does, do they work here, does he work here, like, you can see someone's working on a mannequin, they work here. So... So I'm talking so fast too. God damn, that's weird. So I walk up to this guy, and I ask him about how the hiring process works. And off the fucking bat, my nigga, he just starts talking about, oh, I love your style. You're so cute. Um, where'd you get your jacket? Where'd you get like just a bunch of stuff on my clothes and how I look and stuff like that? And it's kind of weird, but I'm just like, okay, whatever. He's just trying to compliment me. Go on. So 
he eventually tells me about like how you apply online and you can select the stores you want to apply to and then um, you do like a FaceTime interview I guess like you just go on and let me tell you something that shit fucking sucks my nigga cuz you can, you can only do it on your fucking phone and if you don't have the app you have to it's so it's so much shit and if you have a shitty ass phone you want an Android my nigga you can just kiss your ass goodbye they're not about to take you but anyway um he was just telling me about how the internet, I mean, internet, the interview process worked and all this other stuff. And I'm like, okay, thank you, whatever. And he, like, reaches out to shake my hand. Well, I think he's going to shake my hand. And I reach out and I, like, grab his hand. And he, like, starts feeling, like, caressing my fucking hand. And he's like, I'm pretty sure, he was like, I, I'm pretty sure you'll get, you'll get the job. Um, You're so cute and cool or some, something along those lines of, like, I know you'll get the job. Or, like, I, I'll put in a word for you or some shit like that. And I'm like, oh, Okay, so I kind of ruled out that the first place I went to was a place that I ruled out, my nigga. Like, how ironic is that? So I was just like, okay, I probably shouldn't apply there because, like, that nigga works and I don't want to be around him. So I start, I go back home, send my, send my application in, go through all this bullshit to fucking send in this goddamn FaceTime interview, which takes so many fucking steps. I wasn't even sure if I actually sent the interview. That's how fucking, like non like engaging with you it is like it doesn't even tell you if it fucking sent the shit so if anything you guys if anything urban out takes from this fucking video is it fix your fucking interview process my nigga anyway um so about like i want to say that same week or if not a week later um i got a call back for an interview on melrose and if you know where melrose is it's like a super like it's one of those, like, Clout... It's like Clout Avenue, basically, in L.A. It's, like, where all the fucking cool kids go. The round two's there. And awesome shit. Like, the No Jumper store is there. You know, and then Fairfax is right there with Supreme and Bape and fucking Golf Wing and all those other... Like, all the cool kids' stores are there. So, of course, I guess Urban Outfitters has to be there to, like, keep up with the price and, like, the high-end vintage shit. So, I go there for the interview. And to my... I'm not... I'm surprised, but I'm not surprised. I am the only black person there. I'm the only male there and I'm I, th I, don't th I think I was the youngest one because I was still 17 so I think I was the youngest one too so I'm like okay like I gotta kind of stand out I gotta make sure that and the and the person who interviewed me was a white woman so I'm like okay like this is already like an awkward setup so I go in um on time of course like barely I do I swear to god I took a, I took the wrong bus to get there but I took an uber like maybe three or four blocks like down and I got there, like, with 10 minutes to spare. So I was there early. I remember that. So it's not like I was just stumbling in, like, this big, tall-ass nigga, like, lanky-ass motherfucker, just, like, oh, like, just coming in, like, 10 minutes late. I was there early, motherfucker. So we all get there. We're just kind of sitting around, like, just, you know, looking at each other. And the lady comes in. She's like, oh, hey, you guys. My name is blank. I'm like, fuck, I want to expose niggas so bad. My name is blank. I'll be your, um, I'll be coordinating your interview or whatever the fuck the proper terminology is and you know i'm like i'm actually trying to like stand out as much as i can like it's a group interview too so you know like by the time the third or fourth person has answered a question and i think there were like seven or eight of us so like by the time number three or number four is gone like you're you're asked out you don't there's not too many questions where like you can have eight different answers so it's like you know you gotta bring your a game for it so of course i'm like answering all the questions being as like punch like punctual fuck i can't even <laughs> being as like grammatically correct as i can like not trying to fuck up obviously because i want to get the job so i do all that everyone i'm like and i'm i'm doing it i feel like i was doing it so well that she got annoyed the manager got annoyed that i was doing it so well that like she was like no like hey why don't you give someone else a chance to answer first and i was like oh well okay so she picks on everyone else but me to, like, answer the question that picks on me last, knowing damn well there's no motherfucking answer to the question. And it's like, bro, like, why did you, why are you trying to set a nigga up? Like, why, why did you just let me go first for that shit? Like, or you could have just, like, picked me third or second or some shit. Like, I don't know. So it was kind of just, like, a setup from the, be not from the beginning setup, but, like, when she noticed that I was, like, trying to be on my shit, it was like she tried to do some shit to, like, push me back. And it's like, what's your problem, fam? Anyway... So, I wound up not getting the call back. Um, I thought I was like, oh, shit, I have to go apply for a new job. To f Let me tell you, nigga, I was depressed. So, I was like, oh, I got to go apply for fast food again. Oh, my God, after working at a juice place, like, oh, what am I going to, like, I was just, like, I don't know what the fuck I'm going to do. 
So, luckily, well, I guess, fuck it, luckily, um, Santa Monica hits me back up, and they're like, oh, because I sent the interview into, I guess, I didn't even pick Santa Monica. I think they honestly just needed people to work for Black Friday, like I was saying. Because I had, after I met that nigga who worked there, I was like, I'm not about to apply here. So, I feel like even though I didn't apply there, they still just went through, like, I guess the zip codes or whatever, the f however they do it, to find new candidates or whatever. Emailed me, showed up for the interview. Fat-ass lady shows up um, doing the interview. One kid says, um, oh, hey, my name is fucking Josh. I don't fucking know. I don't remember his name. My name is fucking Josh. And... I recently came out the closet, and I feel like Urban Outfitters is a woke enough place to work where they won't judge me. He didn't say that, but, you know. So, the manager who fucking is supposed to be, like, a representation, a representative of this woke company, is, like, she answers, the, she asks the questions, whatever, whatever. And then the next kid comes along. He's like, oh, hi, my name is Kyle. And she cuts him off right there. Right fucking there. She cuts this nigga off and is like, oh, you're gay, too? Like, making, not even, tr not even like an accident, like, not even accidentally saying it, like, making it a joke to say that. And I'm like, my nigga, did you really just try that? And it was like, no one, we didn't laugh at her, we didn't laugh with her, we laughed at the fact that she thought that that was, like, a funny joke or, like, an appropriate joke to make, like, when we met you five minutes ago, my nigga, and we're not gonna, like, unless... Unless you just really bout it. Unless you just really with the shits like that. You just you can just go and get another job. Like, no one's gonna be like, hey, bitch, that's, like, not cool to say or some shit like that. Like, no one's gonna really, like, push up against you. Which should have been, like, my first insight as to, like, oh, this is how these niggas really, like, get down, you know? And now that I'm thinking about it, like, saying it out loud. Like, not even the first time I filmed this. Like, right now, realizing this. Like, this is, like, their third motherfucking red flag. And I haven't even been hired yet. And, I mean, like... One, this is America, my nigga. I can do whatever the fuck. I'm, <laughs> I'm free to choose who the fuck I want to work for, so fuck you. Number two, it was either Urban Outfitters or hitting the motherfucking pole. So, <laughs> about like a day, not not even a day, like that same night I got hired. They're like, oh, whatever, whatever. We liked your interview. You can come in on Friday. So, wow, that was so fucking weird. After that, um, I started doing my training. And all the, you know, all the normal shit that you do once you get a new job. Now that we got the intro done, I guess I can just talk about the managers and all the other shit that went on at the store. I guess to paint, like, the most visually accurate portrait of what the management was like. Imagine, like, you're in a, like, a group or a unit or whatever. And the workers or whoever, like, the people who are, like, really supposed to be doing the shit are, like, on their shit doing whatever they need to do but the people who like are in charge are just so like incompetent and like not aware of what the fuck is actually going on that they like just live in their own little like i don't know it was just so fucking like i, I don't even know how to explain it honestly like they all were just on some other shit like they were they were never just on the same level like i guess they were just all just like power horny or whatever like just so like turned on by like oh yes i can tell you what to do and you have to listen to me like this this kind of weird ass like fucking fetish kink shit like where they just love fucking just having like all of this power to like tell niggas what to do but it's like bruh you're the manager here but in the parking lot you're just a regular nigga so really like what the fuck is up and i guess the worst thing about it was like not even the managers being like fucking retards it's just like they didn't even attempt to make like a bond between like them and like the workers like the workers are obviously gonna like bond together because like we have to work together like we have to do shit together and like we talk or whatever we get to know each other the managers are kind of just like this fucking invisible ass like entity that only comes in to tell you what to do and then leaves like they didn't spend any time trying to like build any like actual like i don't want to say encouragement because like niggas aren't there to like I don't know, niggas aren't there to, like, like, it's not summer camp, or like, oh, yeah, you guys, like, let's build this fucking raft or some shit, like, niggas didn't come to, like, you're obviously there to work and do a job, but it's, like, it makes it so much easier when you can, like, actually talk to people and, like, get shit done, and they didn't really, like, offer that, they didn't make it a place where, like, the higher, the higher ups, so, like, you're only making, like, ten cents more than me, nigga, like, why are you even, like, on this power trip, but they didn't make it to where, like, they had, like, a connection with the... The staff, unless, like, it was, like, some drama, some gossip, some some other shit, bitches. 
I'll get to that when I talk about the coworkers. I'll, it'll, it'll all okay. <laughs> So, that was, like, one of the main things that I feel like fucked it up was, like, they didn't actually try to make it a team. First example of why I just don't fuck with any of these niggas was the fourth red flag, actually, was probably um, the racism that goes on in that fucking store. No surprise, once again, now that I'm thinking about it, the actual company itself has been, like, cited for making, like, a lot of, like, really, like, controversial kind of, like, clothing, which some of it... I don't, I don't see, like, the big deal of it. It's just clothing. To me, it's just clothing, but, like, some of their, like, messages that they're trying to send or, like, what whatever the fuck jokes they're trying to make are just, like, bruh, you, real, you, you really thought niggas were going to laugh at that. Like, you really thought people were going to find that funny. Like, it's just that kind of shit where it's, like, you know you went overboard for, like, at least not your target demographic or, like, the target you focus on is, like, young white people, so you know, like, if you make a racial joke for, like, other, about other groups, like, no one's gonna be like, oh, like, yeah, that white dude wearing that, like, you know, sure, is gonna be so funny, because some random-ass white nigga in fucking Philadelphia made it. Like, no one's gonna think that's funny. This is just one of, like, the many occasions where they've just, if you want, okay, so the protocol there is if you see someone that looks suspicious, or, you know, they're doing something wrong, or you, you clearly see that they're doing something that they shouldn't be doing, or you have, like, just this feeling, like, oh, he's homeless. You can see that they're homeless, like, carrying, like, a big-ass sack of stuff. Or, like, someone walks in like, a bunch of shopping bags or something. You know. Um, they're called the Nick. You page on the little walkie-talkie. You'd be like, hey, we have a Nick in the store. They're wearing blue fucking jeans and a Keith Haring shirt. Um, whatever, whatever. That's it. So, one day, of course, this happened, too. Um, and every time they were, like, you know people of the Caucasian ethnicity doing suspect shit, like a group of maybe 8, 10, 12 teenage girls walk into the store. Oh, that's no problem. They're just shopping. They're having fun. They're just being loud little girls. Let them go. Don't worry about them. We don't have to worry. Like, they're no issue. They're no trouble. Ha, ha, ha. They're just here shopping, you know, Throwing the throwing the stuff off the racks, you know they're they're just kids, you know they're they're children. Come on, you guys, don't 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 worry about them. Don't they don't that's, come on, come really really you guys, they're they're kids. Come on, my nigga, two black people walk into the motherfucking store. They're taller than five nine. Oh, we got two nicks. Um, there there's I I I feel I have a sense that they're gonna steal something. They came in with uh with two bags from a Louis Vuitton store, but it doesn't look like anything's in them. I don't know if they can afford Louis Vuitton really, but I mean they're wearing some kind of like flashy clothes, but those might be stolen too. I I'm not sure, but I yeah, they're definitely nicks. Um um yeah. Do you guys want me to call the police? Like we need to we need to get like some security or something in here because I just don't feel safe around them. They're they they're looking at the clothes. They're looking at the clothes right now. They're, they're looking right now. And, and I think one of them's going to steal something. He, he, he has that look on his face. He's, he's going to steal something. And his buddy, too. They're, they're kind of like in the back of the store, like, looking around. I, yeah, I think, I, think he stole, I think he stole something. I can't see right now, but I, I think he did. I think it's stolen. Yeah. That type of shit, bro. Jokes aside, let me tell you the story. So, I'm working one day. Um, on the men's floor, which is down. We have the women's floor on the top. I guess men, like, it's like a unisex kind of like t-shirt, bag, camera, kind of accessory level. And then downstairs is like the men's section slash music, technology, whatever. So, black dude comes down to the men's floor. I'm there alone. I th I'm pretty sure I was alone that day. 11, 12 in the morning. And they're like, oh, did you guys see that Nick that walked down the stairs? Whatever, whatever. I'm like, for like a homeless guy or... Because usually in the morning, that's like all the people that come in are like either the rich ass niggas who are, you just can't wait to go inside Urban Outfitters, the tourists, or um, homeless people. Because it's like, who's really going shopping at 10, 11 in the morning? So I'm like, I don't see anyone suspicious down here, whatever, whatever. Um, you, got, you know, are you sure he went down here? What he looked like? Some shit. Oh, um, tall African American male. Uh, the whole fucking police description, my nigga. And I'm just like, bruh, it's a, it's a motherfucker in a goddamn collared shirt, bald, like, bruh, he's not about to steal, like, Oxford, like, he looks like a fucking lawyer, my nigga, like, he's not gonna steal some shit, bro. So, 
They're like, I'm like, he doesn't look suspicious. I don't think he's gonna steal anything, whatever. They're like, no, you watch him. You make sure he does not steal anything because we have a very bad feeling about him. And I'm just like, okay, he's like kind of, he's just standing here like, no, like, he's not bothering anyone. He's just standing there. And then she, like, my fucking, one of the managers, she's like, this fucking double chin, scar face looking ass bitch talking about, oh, oh, we need to call the police. Or no, we didn't, she didn't say call the police at first. She said, we need to call the ambassadors. The ambassadors are basically people who, you know, walk around the um, promenade or the pier and, like, help the tourists, whatever. So she's like, call the ambassadors, get them out of here, and we'll solve it then. So one of the other managers runs, he just runs downstairs because he's just so scared of fucking black people that, that don't work for him or work with him. And he's, like, rushing to the fucking office to go and fucking call the police or call the ambassadors. So he calls and he's like, um, he goes back on the radio after he calls, I guess. He's like, oh, hey, I called. They're saying they're too busy to come to the store. Um, what else do we do? So then this bitch, on the walkie-talkie, where everyone on the walkie-talkie can hear her, says, call the police and tell them that he has a knife and he's threatening customers. And in my head, I'm just like, oh, so we lying, lying now. Because I have been watching this nigga since he walked down. Like, I saw him when he walked down. I was like, oh, he looks pretty cool, whatever. And then he fucking, they call me on the radio talking about look out for this Nick, whatever. I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll look out for the Nick, but he's not doing shit, so I'll, I'll back off. I'm not going to, like, hawk gaze, stare, fucking whatever. Uh, eagle eye this Nick. I said hawk gaze. <laughs> I'm not going to just eagle eye this nigga like the entire time he's here because that's just fucking weird. I don't know. I don't think, it, I don't remember if the cops came or not, but I know he left before, thank God he fucking left. I was not trying to see that shit. He left before the cops came. And just all this shit. And I got in trouble because I fucking said he wasn't stealing shit. Like, nigga, get the fuck on, my nigga. Like, get the fuck out my face with that bullshit. But, yeah, that's just one of the many motherfucking times. Another time that just hit me. My fucking aunt is a federal fucking officer of the goddamn law of the United Motherfucking States of America. Walks into the store. I didn't know she was coming. I see her um, coming down to the men's floor because that's where I just always am for some fucking reason. And I see one of my coworkers following behind her. And he's on a man. He's like, there's associates, there's managers, and then there's like team leads. Whatever the fuck that means, I still don't fucking know to this day. So he's like kind of just shadowing her and her fucking child, her fucking daughter, bro. Like her daughter is like seven years old, my nigga. She's a fucking kid. So... That happens, whatever. He's like kind of following her, and I'm like, bro, are you, like, are you good? Like, I'm just because I'm like, I'm not gonna say like, yo, that's my aunt. Like, why the fuck are you following her? Because then I don't want it to be like, oh, he's trying to protect his family. That's why you got defensive. Like, you're trying, to, you're blinded. You you have like a bias, whatever the fuck. So I'm like, oh, like, why, why are you following this lady? Like, now she's now she's in my zone. Like, why are you in my area? Like, what does she do? He's like, oh no, she didn't do anything, but she's just looking really suspicious. She doesn't look like um. Like, the people that normally shop here. And I'm like, my nigga. Like, there's a bunch of people that don't look like they're fucking 15 and looking to wear the new fucking Travis Scott shit. Like, what the fuck? What do you mean? Like, people just come to the mall to shop, my nigga. Like, and to add icing on the motherfucking Uncle Ruckus cake, this nigga is black, bruh. Like, why are you following this fucking old ass black? Like, to me, she's old. But, like, <laughs> why are you following this old ass lady? And her fucking kid. Like, do you really think someone's gonna be that stupid to fucking steal with their kid? Maybe. But still, like, why the fuck, like... And he didn't even page it, too. Like, that's the weirdest part about it. It's just, like, he's just following her on his own fucking whim. He didn't say shit. He didn't say, like, oh, hey, like, we got a lady who's looking suspicious. Like, bruh, like, why are you just doing this on your own, my nigga? Like, why are you being a free agent right now? So, that shit blows over. Like, whatever. I was really dead ass about to beat this nigga's ass, though. Like... I might still need his fade, to be honest, but that's another story. Bruh, I know niggas steal. I know people in general fucking steal, like, but my thing is, one, don't discriminate. Two, don't just, like, be weird about it, like, follow them, like, just because, like, if you see it happening, then say something, like, just don't be weird about it. Like, don't just target people just because of what they look like. But my thing with them was, like, say there was an actual person who stole some shit, okay, the fuck fuck you want me to i'm not your fucking treasure recovery team nigga like i'm not about to go like face off against this nigga before he leaves the store bro like fuck you the fuck are you on bro like to be honest like there would be times where there are like actual people that i've seen steal and they were like 
I was like, yeah, I saw them steal that. And they're like, oh, go stop them. Uh, excuse, are, am I, are you giving me a raise, my nigga? Like, why, why, why? No, I'm not about to do that, bro. And the funniest thing is, they would, they used to tell us, they used to put this in every motherfucking meeting. If there's ever someone who's stealing, you, like, and you can stop them, um, do it. We need to get our loss prevention down to zero, whatever, whatever. There was one time they had me at the fucking door. Some random ass, like, dirty ass homeless nigga wearing no shoes, like, is walking out with, like, a pair of Tommy Hilfiger jeans or something. He's walking out with something. And they're like, on the walkie, they're like, oh, Cole, get him, get him, stop him. He can't leave the store. He has our pants. I'm like, nigga, shit, you need, you need a door open, my guy? Like, I got, have a nice day, my nigga. Like, you enjoy those pants, bro. Like, I don't know what these niggas got. Like, they. Bro could have had a shank, a knife, a gun, bro. Like, I'm not about to stand in front of someone trying to leave, like, with some stolen, like, in that mood of, like, I'm stealing something, I'm doing something bad, like, how far can I take this? I'm not trying to sound, like, extra dramatic. You never fucking know. And I'm not about to put my life on the line for a pair of, like, pants that are made for, like, $3 slapped with the fucking Tommy Hilfiger tag on the ass. Love you, daddy, but I'm not about, I'm, I'm not with that kind of shit, bro. Like, I'm not about to risk it. So, and also, they fired a girl. I, I didn't like this girl, because, like, a fucking Godzilla fucked little Uzi and had a fucking C-section in the, in a volcano or some shit, but this, <laughs> what the fuck? Um, <laughs> what the fuck was I gonna say? Oh, this girl, like, she wasn't even clocked in yet. And I guess someone's like running out to leave the store with some stolen shit. And they open the door and she's like walking in and she's like, no, you put that stuff back or something like that. And then like the person like kind of stopped and then like the managers ran and caught, got the stuff back or whatever. Oh my God, you're our hero. She did it. She stopped the thief. You guys see, that's what you guys should be doing. Stopping the thieves. We don't want our, uh, our loss prevention and all this bullshit. We can always get it back because we're a fucking multi-million dollar company. Our loss prevention doesn't really mean shit because, you know, internet sales are going up and all this other bullshit. But, you know, look, come on. You gotta, you gotta stop the thieves. They fired that bitch. Like, a week later, the fucking martyr of their cause is fired. Because, I'm gonna tell you guys this. Any store... In Amer I don't want to say in America, but most stores, unless it's like a shit, even a mall, any store, I'm pretty sure any fucking store, if they see you stealing, or if you're suspected of stealing, or even if, unless it's like a security guard, it, even a security guard, I doubt they can do that. But it's called, unless it's like a fucking actual cop or sheriff or whatever, law enforcement, like deputized ass niggas, it's a no chase policy. So they can't, like, even if they, I could steal some shit, like, I could walk into Walmart, steal a motherfucking candy bar, walk out, put it in my pocket. They can't steal, I mean, they can't steal me. They can't stop me. They can't chase me after. They can say, hey, hey. They can't, like, physically run after me. It's some other shit to, like, have them chase you. But, like, if you're just doing some random shit, like, just some regular, regular, like, just kleptomania, put this in my pocket, leave shit, they can't chase you for it. So, if they do chase you, then that's against the law. I think it's, like, a law or something. I don't know the exact thing, but, yeah. Fun fact, if you want to, I'm not, never mind, fuck it. <laughs>